vagina like a starfish and then you're bleeding into a diver <laughs> for like two weeks. Hey guys, it's Diana. Today's episode is in English with Chinese subtitles. Now for everybody new here, we are a bicultural bilingual family based in Singapore. My husband and I have been long distance since COVID started because his work is in tech in China. He's been back in Singapore for a few weeks now and we've been able to make some really great new friends together. It's just so nice to have our social circles overlap again. And today we're having a Colombian style brunch at our friends Marie and Daniel's place. They had just moved here from Indonesia. Marie is a fashion designer. Check out her unique and incredible bags here. And Daniel is a startup founder. They're also introducing us to their friends Monica and Stefan, who had also just moved here from Bali. Now we're all in our 30s, starting families or growing families. So I'm sharing our frank and open conversations around pregnancy, childbirth, school choice, and education and so on. They have a low floor, but huge windows that frame it. Shanghai, Shanghai, inside, Shanghai. but outside looks like crap, right? So, so and you guys are right opposite the tentacle. Oh yeah, I mean we literally yeah, walk. Yeah, yeah. So location is like is day. killer. Yeah. We're learning to make edits. Edit bus. So we have like 30 or 40 cans in Colombia. So it's just something to put stuff in, or it comes with cheese, and the dough itself is like quite nice. So it's okay. kind of like a foreign base. So I just put one cup of cornmeal and one cup of water and then you'll yeah. just you just have Mixed to see, you know, like how stick it is so it has a How's the mixing going? A little can you make a little ball? It's flat like 0 0.8. Mm Oh, Marie, you actually look like you cook. Actually, this is the first time we have people over in like three years. Really? They want to do They're a little bit more grainy, but I feel like this one's nice too. You just feel managed more well, nice. So it's kind of like up to you. She I make it seem so, so easy, easy, right? Wasn't that easy to fold it in? All over the place. Can I just pick another you bit can. and cover <laughs> it? You can, you can just make sure it's kind of like uh, this thickness. Monica kind of looks like this this Cantonese um, actress. Me? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. You have to show us later. One time someone told me like, oh my god, Marie, I just saw someone who looks like you. And then she shows me this homeless woman going through the airport. And I was like, are you fucking kidding? And she's like, but her face is like yours. Our black and white party is starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The square one is without cheese. Whipping out the soup just now? Father God, we just thank you for this time that we have together to break bread and, and have a meal together. We thank While Donovan and I are not Christian, we really like it when our friends say graces before meals because it just reminds us to be grateful of everything that we have in life. What, what are these called in Spanish again? Huevos? Pericos. Here's the funny thing. Perico mm -hmm. also means coffee in some uh, regions and also means cocaine. Did we get the cocaine so, version? So when, you're this, so when you're in this... I'm having the first arepa. Mm -hmm. It's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the, the it's cornmeal. Like, it's like what and kind so of cheese with the cheese. So I put feta and mozzarella. Mm. Mm. The only way to sort of set the date is mm -hmm. yeah. they just like it. Maybe still have that day. Well, have you guys decided yet? Sorry, I, I kind of missed that. I'm almost recommending you should try to have it on the September 26th. Oh, Positive. but I don't know how much earlier you have to do it, so there's Good. no like surprise. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if they can do a section if you're having like contractions. You know, what they, can. Mean? they can. They can. They can. Mm -hmm. So we waited after the the water broke. We waited for almost 24 hours. Mm -hmm. You know, when the water broke, you have to be careful and you want it to move fast. Midwives started telling me, because we insist, oh, I want a natural birth. Mm. And she said, listen, your doctor, he hardly suggested C-section. So mm. if he does mm. right now, I think 
be better. Mm. Listen. Mm. And mm. so true enough, when Mark, uh, Ethan come out, he's already blue, you know? Mm. Oh, wow. Well, mm. I did all you things cry? possible for Metro Aqua. Oh. So, then 20 hours, I was there, okay, try this one, try the other one. Mm. Right? And then mm. Ethan was <laughs> came out like a cone. Stories from people saying, you know, with these actions, all the pain, it will last a long time. Whereas with natural birth, mm. you know, it will be super fast. You can walk. They cut your vagina like a starfish and then you're bleeding into a diaper <laughs> for like two weeks. So, once no. you feel like men shouldn't have opinions on what you do with your birth, basically that would be uh, I don't have any opinion. Yeah. Yeah. See? They're, they're, I was they're being biased. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Nobody they better not be biases. mensplaining <laughs> this. Like, yeah. I was telling her that we're going to do a C-section and her husband was next to her. I mean, we he's a jokester and all this. We got along really well. And then suddenly he says, no, Mary, the real way to have a baby is it's mm. natural. And I said, do you want to cut your penis like a starfish? And he's like, no. And he's like, why are you, why are you saying that? And I was like, because that's what I have a small vagina. It's natural. And he's like, oh, well, how about water? I was like, how about you have no opinions in this? <laughs> <laughs> like, Did you do I C-section so. or? I, I had two natural births. And the second time round, because Kiki was huge, right? Kiki was like mm. 4.5 kilograms. I mean, he was wow. enormous. Wow. Mm. So after he came out, and after the placenta came out, it was also very big. So I, I had like massive blood loss, and all of a sudden, all these people were rushing in to try and stop the bleeding. Mm. And it was like kind of like emergency code red, and all of a sudden, wow. there were like four nurses all trying to stop the bleeding oh, wow. and they put a bucket to oh. catch the blood I'm like, film this, film this, I want to see, see what's going on it was pretty scary, the blood pressure dropped a lot because of the blood loss mm. and I met uh, someone the other day, they have four boys try one more time, you have a girl, right? So they got twin boys oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> you can imagine the chaos When I was looking for schools, I, I was finding it very hard to decide between like the Montessori, mm -hmm. the Reggio Emilia, whatever, the different styles of parenting, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But what they claim to be is like a Silicon Valley inspired school that takes the best of each style of teaching. Honestly though, the thing that sold me was because the campus was really pretty. The school uniform was very nice. So I was yeah, I love yeah. college. That's it. You <laughs> sold <laughs> college. Don't worry. Give me a moment. Oh, actually, you can talk about Montessori. Because he actually went to Montessori until Montessori. it's 12. I got screwed up. I went to Montessori until I was 13. Yeah. Ah, that explains a lot. It does! The primary difference between um, alternative systems like Montessori, mm -hmm. Reggio, and traditional school is that um, the alternative ones are student-led, whereas the other ones are teacher-led. Mm -hmm. Student-led means that um, they try to have a very small class size. That's Actually, good. it's one to five in Texas. They don't really have a curriculum in the same way. Like, for example, let's say like the child is um, very into math, like, like me, for example. So then maybe like by second grade, they start teaching like pre-algebra or, or bases or like fourth dimension or things like mm. that. Rocket engineering. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can learn stuff like pretty, pretty early. You like... progress as quickly as you want. Mm -hmm. So actually Mark Zuckerberg also went to Montessori. I mean, Larry and Sergey, the two founders of Google. Went also went to Montessori. Well, Montessori. Early Google so, so basically it's like, if you're, Jeff very, went to Montessori. if you're very gifted in a certain area, you'll find that these kids are already learning college level math by yeah. the time they're like seven or eight, right? Um, but they can be very underdeveloped in areas that they have no interest in. That's what I was going to ask. They expose you to other things that you may not like. Other they things. expose, but they don't push. Let's say, for example, you go through a normal curriculum and you hate math. Mm -hmm. Like, sorry, this is literally the math curriculum from first to sixth grade. I have mixed feelings about it. I, I don't know. Yeah, we have concerns about it too. He's very strong in what he likes and actually quite, maybe quite weak in other areas. And that's sort of the problem with Montessori because you're not pushed to do those things that you don't like. Yeah, so so be, we right? actually think that like in Asia, so for example, like socializing is very important. There's all these like social rules, like unspoken social rules that you don't really know until you're like sort of in a group environment. Mm. Whereas in the US, us, you know, people are like just more individualistic, everybody can just do whatever they want, so mm -hmm. it's kind of okay. So, I think if you're growing up in Asia, we would want our kids to be exposed to more than just the Montessori system. I mean, it's like the cost of debate in the US, too, right? Like, or even anywhere, like how you raise your kids. Like, in general, we're entering an era nowadays. I don't know about you guys, but like, in general, people tend to spoil their kids more. Have it easy. Yeah, have it easy. I don't want my kid to have like too, too, too tough of a life, and mm -hmm. if they really don't like certain things, I mean, that, that's the, at least in the US, yeah, that's like the general you, you trend. You see that in the employment pool, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, when you hire people, and I'm like, yeah. where have you guys been, man? You haven't faced any difficulties in life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, think, I think in general, the trend in the US is uh, protect the kids. But rather like coddle, it's not even like spoil. And then we choose school, we choose based on the parents. Yeah. She has a face <laughs> on the steady, she has a face on the parents. Oh, I said it like, too. Mommy, the class 
Cool. So, <laughs> the normal school system is, is based on the factory model. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, basically, back in the industrial age, where you just have like a bunch of widgets all you, go in. You're gonna go as fast as the least common denominator, essentially. Yeah. Right? They they have started to incorporate some very progressive cutting edge elements. The kids actually made their own vlog in the last semester, like the okay. last three months. Film and then edit and then put together a story and then they try and understand social media from like a content production point of view versus rather than a consumption like, point of view. Lifetime. And then next semester they're doing like an NFT project. I think for kids when they're younger, like certainly like Sebastian, our first kid, I think the biggest value for him going to school, like maybe any school, but maybe particularly the treehouse, was actually just social socializing. Socializing. Yeah. 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 That's correct. Because I feel like his like, you know, if you're just teaching like multiplication and addition and like fractions or whatever, like, right. and he learned like multiplication was three, so he just watched like this thing called Number Blocks on YouTube, which is just, like pretty socially awkward and didn't like to hang out with kids. I um, wonder where that came from. Yeah, from my jeans. So, so like <laughs> being in a forced environment, more or less, where, where you're with other kids of the same mm -hmm. age, and you start learning things like who's gonna push who around mm -hmm. and who's the boss and who's. But he wasn't awkward towards us. No, no, he's always been okay with adults. He's because I felt like he, he, he's awkward he, with people his age. You cannot choose friends for your kids, but you can mm -hmm. definitely just put them in the right soil. That's what's all about the uniforms and the parents. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Social skills is number one. Number one. Yeah, number one. Sure. Then the rest, it will come through. I learn from smarter people. I always employ all the smarter people than me. I cannot go to Harvard Law. I hire Harvard lawyers mm -hmm. to teach me. It's not because you have to be the smartest. You have to be the gifted, the talented. Mm -hmm. But how you can, how you communicate with people, mm -hmm. right? And then how are you gonna do that? I started taking sleeping pills when I was 12. Okay, because one of our friends, Y, is um, Singaporean. She did well. She had anxiety since she was like eight. Right. Yeah. If they know that someone goes to school, right away they know that kids are smart, right? Like they're like, oh, he goes to this school. And I didn't know it was a thing because in Colombia we make fun of smart people. I was in a museum or something and then we were writing some people and they started, to, uh, and right away my Singaporean friends were like, which school did you go to? And they started talking about him and, and after he left they're like, well, he's really smart. And I was like, yeah. why do you know that? Yeah, like Raffles oh, because he goes words. because yeah. he goes to this school and it's really hard to get into that school. Mm. Like it's it's like a thing. Like it's the hardest school to get into Singapore. Mm. And I was like, mm. oh in Colombia we smack people like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she's like, no, here we have a lot of respect yeah. for that. And yes. I was like, oh, yes. okay. So I started understanding he was very academic, like that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this episode or if you like to watch more content like this. Consider subscribing and turning on the notification bell so you know of every new video that comes your way.